Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss cats. And that's because I promised to discuss cat evolution and cat domestication in one of the previous videos you can find in the description that discusses the domestication and evolution of dogs, and specifically some of the more recent and more unusual discoveries that basically surprised everybody. But today we're going to do the same for these little guys, creatures that seem to be super cute, but could also be potentially like super evil, because I mean just look at them, they're always planning something. Anyway, on a more serious note, we're basically going to discuss how the domestic cat actually conquered the world and became one of the most widespread species on the entire planet. Because turns out the story here is a lot more complex and even more mysterious and more religious than we ever imagined. And more importantly, very different from what we previously believed and from what most people think happened. And so in this video we're going to discuss several major recent studies that as always you can find in the description below, that basically focus on genetic analysis and some of the historical and archaeological evidence in order to find out where these things actually came from. But the point is to focus on the actual timeline based on a lot of evidence, because today we do have enough evidence to definitively point out where they potentially came from and how all of this started. And so here we have evidence built on various fragments, for example ancient bones, historical art, and various carcasses, and even evidence based on genetic analysis of various cats from around the planet that all basically point to the same origin, which as I mentioned seems to actually rewrite some of the first chapters of cats evolutionary journey. And so these recent studies from 2025 overturned some of the previous assumptions about how cats spread in Europe and in Asia. But first let's establish some of the basics and discuss some of the previous assumptions, including what I think most of us thought was true. We know that the domestic cat descends from the African wild cat, referred to as Phyllis libica libica. And I mean if you look at the pictures and illustrations, they do resemble modern cats quite a lot. But here the question was, where exactly did they get domesticated and how did they eventually become pets? And well previously there were two main ideas. This was either in the Levant region during the Neolithic period 10,000 years ago, or possibly in the Pharaonic Egypt. And at first scientists thought that maybe this Levant hypothesis was actually the correct one. This suggested domestication around 9,500 years ago and was actually based on the discovery of a buried cat on the island of Cyprus that was found in 2004. And so essentially at first scientists thought that maybe all of this started right here. And at first this discovery made quite a lot of sense. This was also the region where a lot of early farmers started to introduce agriculture, which of course meant that they probably had to deal with pests. And as we know from Tom and Jerry, cats and mice don't really play along very well. And so these initial propositions suggest that cats were associated with early farmers in the so-called fertile crescent. But the problem is that here the only piece of evidence was that buried cat on Cyprus. There was basically no other evidence otherwise. But in contrast, that second hypothesis actually had a lot of evidence. And here let's actually discuss something that happened in England in the 19th century that was actually kind of shocking. This is sometimes referred to as the Great Cat Mummy Shipment. And so in the late 1880s, an Egyptian farmer discovered an enormous cat cemetery in Egypt. It contained hundreds of thousands if not millions of mummified cats, weighing approximately 100 tons. This was an absolutely monumental archaeological discovery, but here cats were actually not used for archaeology or for science. The sheer volume of cats, and specifically mummified cats, which at this point did not really have a lot of archaeological value, was at first considered to be a commodity, but eventually someone decided to sell them to England as a fertilizer. And so they were eventually ground into powder, with all of these mummies eventually sold for approximately 4 pounds per ton. And so here up to a million mummified cats eventually ended up in Europe and were used only as fertilizer. Now that story by itself was bizarre, but this is a really interesting segue into what very likely happened in Egypt and why so many cats were mummified. Because here we have abundant iconographic evidence and of course evidence of mummies, here's actually one from approximately 3500 years ago, suggesting a very interesting relationship between early Egyptians and cats. And so it looks like in this case humans and cats established a very bizarre religious relationship. And we actually have a lot of evidence for what exactly happened. This was the so-called cult of Bastet. The Egyptian goddess, who was always depicted with cat-like head, 
and was supposed to be the goddess of the sun worshipped throughout most of ancient Egypt. But interestingly at first, in some of the earlier depictions, she looked kinda like this. She had the head of a lion. Yet with time, her appearance transformed into cat-like, and by 9th to 7th century BC, she was almost always depicted with a cat-like head. And that's actually how most of her imagery looks like. And well, Egyptians also were pretty famous for their sacrifice. Sacrifice of massive scales. And so here, millions of cats were bred and mummified as offerings to this goddess. Here, raising cats in very large numbers for the purpose of sacrifice, extremely likely favored more social and docile individuals, which basically forced the cats to sort of get domesticated. In other words, here we have an example of an animal that became domesticated through religious breeding. And it was very likely this cultural association between cats and the cult of Bastet that eventually elevated cats as a very important holy animal in the entire Egypt. With this practice eventually spreading beyond Egypt, first to Phoenicians, then to Greeks, and eventually Romans. And so here we have a lot of evidence that initial domestication of cats may have been actually religiously motivated. And this hypothesis is supported directly by finding specific maternal lineages previously detected in Egyptian mummies and Roman imperial cats across Europe. And so here let's actually briefly discuss some of the genetic analysis, because it also provides a lot of evidence. And so first, there's a very big and pervasive misconception that stems from earlier studies using mitochondrial DNA. And this initial misconception suggested that some of the early cats spread with Neolithic farmers approximately 6,000 years ago as agriculture spread across Europe. This of course seemed logical, because cats could have been used as pest control, especially in cultures that required a lot of grain. But recent studies using nuclear DNA, which generally provide much higher resolution of genetic history, dramatically changed the story. A full genetic analysis revealed that this was completely incorrect. Here scientists discovered that some of the ancient cats living in Europe and even Turkey were actually members of the native European wildcat species Phallus sylvestris, a completely different species that was not domesticated at all. And though some of the ancient European wildcats did possess some genetic markers similar to the African wildcats, this was not due to human introduction of domestic cats. Instead, this was some kind of a hybridization event involving different wildcats. And so the main takeaway from these genetic studies is that domesticated cats did not come to Europe during the agricultural period and were still living mostly in Egypt. And so any cats in Europe at this time were all wild cats. With the additional genetic analysis suggesting that some of the modern cat ancestors almost definitely originated in North Africa and only came to Europe approximately 2000 years ago. So actually during the times of the Roman Empire. And in this case, this was a human controlled dispersal that seems to have happened in at least two waves. Both of them came from these Egyptian cats. The first wave very likely started approximately 3000 years ago and involved wild cats from North Africa translocated to Sardinia. That's the island you see right there off the coast of Italy. And so the first European cats were actually Italian. But it was really the second wave that seems to have been the largest. Here this was a dramatic introduction of cats across Europe that seems to have happened in the first century CE. And this was very likely during the Roman Imperial era when the Rome started to expand into Europe. This was an extremely fast dispersal, with cats even reaching sites in Britain by 1st and 2nd century CE. And these early domestic cats all shared extremely close genetic affinity with modern African wild cats, particularly those cats located in Tunisia. So this definitely supports the North African origin and not the Levantine hypothesis that we've discussed a few minutes back. But I guess here there's still a question of why. Why did this second dispersal happen so quick? And why did cats become so popular? Well, here the answer very likely involves trade, empires, and possibly religion. Because here the spread was extremely likely facilitated by some of these early Mediterranean civilizations. And as I mentioned previously, extremely likely Roman conquests. Because here we even have evidence of feline remains in a lot of different Roman military sites in locations like Serbia and Austria. And so just like with a lot of other things in Western civilization, cats seem to have been the result of the Romans. And in this case, this hypothesis is pretty strong, especially because those Egyptian cat mummies I've discussed previously seem to have a direct genetic linkage with a lot of cats that were spread by Romans on the entire European continent. And so here the biggest surprise is that, unlike dogs that very likely co-evolved with humans for tens of thousands of years, 
Cats seem to be a more or less recent arrival. Technically, it makes cats one of the more recently domesticated animals in some of these early cultures. But this is, of course, the Western cats. What about the cats in the East? Well, here the history of Eastern cats is also kind of intriguing. And that's because for a long time, once again, discovery of various small cat bones, mostly found in different Chinese farming settlements, suggested that they also possibly came from these late Neolithic farmers. But it looks like this assumption was also incorrect. Recent genetic analysis of all of these samples revealed that these ancient cats from approximately 3500 and 5400 years ago were not domesticated animals either. They were also a type of a wild cat. And specifically, they were actually leopard cats. Prio Nilurus bengalensis. And here the relationship with humans was most likely based on commensalism. Basically, they exploited human settlements for food, in this case various pests, pests that were quite abundant in these early rice settlements, but this was not a domestication event, and these cats remained wild. And though some of the ancient Chinese texts mentioned that people welcomed some of these wild cats, they were still an entirely different species and were not domesticated. Moreover, this particular species seems to have vanished around 200 CE. This coincided with the turbulent era during the Han Dynasty collapse and possibly resulted in these cats going extinct. But after a few centuries, the Masti cats did actually make their way to China. This was during Tan Dynasty in the 7th century CE, and once again genetic evidence links these cats to some of the African cats that very likely spread through merchant-facilitated dispersal, or basically through the famous Silk Road. And in this case, scientists were even able to reconstruct some of the appearance these cats might have had, identifying the cats from 730 CE as short fur and very likely partially white with spots. But because in this case cats only arrived approximately 1300 years ago, it means that at least for China these were some of the last domesticated animals introduced in the region. Here they arrived way after cattle, sheep and even horses. And so in this case cats definitely have a really interesting and complex story to tell, but a story that's now been rewritten several times and tells us quite a lot about the human culture 2000 years ago. But this also highlights how difficult it is to study this, mostly because these wild domesticated feline skeletal remains very often just look so similar, and so it's hard to tell if we're looking at a wild cat or a domesticated cat. And so it was really because of the genetic analysis that scientists started to make some progress. And here we have a direct information that cat's journey was extremely complex and quite diverse. This was very likely not a single event, but seems to have involved multiple populations and multiple cultures, even though at first it was probably driven entirely by religious needs, or specifically that cult of Bastet. And though we still have quite a lot of open questions, for the most part the story is now pretty clear. But I guess here there's still one unanswered question. Why exactly did ancient Egyptians pick cats? What made cats so important for mummification, and why did they replace lions in the Bastet cult? And so maybe in the future we'll have some of the answers, but at least for now it's going to remain a mystery. But at least for now that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. We'll come back and discuss some of the other domestication events in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye and in the next part about cats, we're going to discuss something that's maybe a little bit more scary. The famous parasite that potentially infected most of the human population and is controlling our minds. Yeah, that one is going to be a little bit scary. Subscribe so that you don't miss that video.